we go. Hello, we're here with Alex Hudson, who is the chair of the Endorse Yet Yes for Transit. Um, would you like to go ahead with your five minute introduction? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you everyone for having me. Um, I am here today on behalf of the Proposition 1, which is a measure to continue investing in transit service, as well as accessibility programs that will be on the Seattle ballot in November. Uh, this measure is a continuation of the Seattle Transportation Benefit District, which was passed by Seattle voters in 2014. It is a 0.15% sales tax measure that will uh, invest in transit service throughout the city of Seattle. It will continue to subsidize and invest in a new generation of transit riders by creating free transit passes for all Seattle public high school students, as well as means qualified middle school students. Uh, there is a program for Seattle Housing Authority residents, as well as a new program this year um, for the next six years, which will be investing in programs for essential workers. It also has funding available in it that is really targeted at addressing the West Seattle transportation crisis, knowing um, how important it is going to be for us to get to that 30% mode shift goal that the city has, as well as to be able to offset the pretty detrimental traffic overflow impacts to our Southwest Seattle communities in um, Georgetown, South Park, White Center, communities that have already experienced disproportionate uh, impacts of environmental injustice. And the, the fourth component of this is an investment in transit capital projects, by which we mean transit um, signal priority and bus lanes that make sure that we're using our transit dollars in the most efficient way and that buses are not trapped in traffic uh, behind private vehicles. Uh, this is a six year measure. It is uh, smaller than the original uh, proposal, though we, we, we do consider it to be a renewal, and that is because of the loss of the car tabs that was in the original uh, STPD one, that we lost that authority when the passage of uh, Initiative 976 uh, last November. We know that now is a time of constricted mobility, but that transit will continue to be the most affordable option for people in Seattle, as well as a significant investment in achieving our climate goals. Uh, while ridership is down, it is worth noting that uh, King County Metro is still serving over 150,000 trips every single day. And that it should come as no surprise that those uh, trips are uh, really a vital lifeline uh, for low-income communities and communities of color in South Seattle and South King County who are transit dependent uh, folks and people who really are counting on transit to continue to get them to their jobs uh, and to other essential services. Transit is the affordable option um, as people are will be looking at ways to tighten up their household budgets in a constricted economy. Transit is the green option, which is going to help us get our get to our climate goals and reduce greenhouse gas emissions and uh, transit is an incredibly important part of the recovery of our economy and, and, and of our cities to keep us keep keeping moving forward. Uh, it is simply impossible to imagine a Seattle in which we do not continue to lead the nation in transit investments and transit ridership. Um, the geography and uh, the geometry of our city really um, necessitates that we have great transit service. The targeted service uh, this time is really going to be measured by, um, by riders. So as I mentioned earlier, that we, we know where riders are coming from and, and, and be putting investments where those people already are. So that uh, at a time right now where we're doing social distancing and we are limited to, uh, in some cases, only 12 to 16 people on every bus, the very definition of what a full bus is has completely changed. So it is simply not the time where we can be walking away from these critical investments that our neighbors, our planet, and our economy are relying on. So I am hoping uh, to, to see the uh, continued support for our nation leading investments and ability to deliver transit here in the city of Seattle. 
Great, thank you. And so now we'll move into follow-up questions and uh, the response time for these are two minutes apiece. Um, would anybody like to ask a question? I guess I'll go. Um, would it be possible, could you tell us more about if, if this measure didn't pass, could you tell us about, you know, what Seattle would be and would be losing um, in terms of services, um, various programs, um, what would that be? Tell us a little bit more about the impact. Yeah, uh, transit is across the nation in a, um, really up on the ropes. And so it is the Seattle Transportation Benefit District invests in routes that serve 65% of, uh, of their route period in the city of Seattle. The, and it is additional service above the baseline. So right now, Seattle has done a tremendous level of investment and gotten us to the point where 70% of Seattle households are within walking distance of 12 minute or better transit service. We would be losing $42 million worth of investment in transit service that could cost us hundreds of thousands of transit hours. We would not be able to have these, the free programs for students, seniors, and low-income people. We would not be able to uh, drive investment into the West Seattle transportation crisis, and we would not be able to do transit capital projects that, that get into efficiency. It would be, um, it would, it would simply be a, a, a catastrophe for transit riders. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Robert. So uh, as we know, Initiative 976 is pending at the Supreme Court. If uh, that goes our way and the Supreme Court throws out Initiative 976 and restores the city's car tab authority, uh, how does that impact uh, what would be approved here with Proposition 1? Um, so if we were able to get the car tab money back, uh, and I hope we are all lighting a candle for that every day. Mm -hmm. um, what that would mean is that our city council would be able to come back in and, and reinstate some of that service or some of that investment through a graduated process. So the original STBD one was $60 in car tabs. A volume of that needs to be approved by the voters, but we would be able to step that up um, by going to a uh, an additional $20 uh, and then within 24 months of that being in place, you can add the more money in. So it would be a graduated reinvestment that the Seattle City Council has said that they are committed to doing, um, but it wouldn't be able to get us to where we were all at once. Thank you, Summer. I had that same question, but I will go to a different question. Um, my son is a teen and I am so, so glad that there is um, ORCA, card, uh, ORCA cards for kids who need it, um, you know, are means tested for uh, middle school and also for all high schoolers. Is that currently paid for out of King County? Is that currently being paid for out of the school? I'm not sure actually where the funding is coming from for that currently. Um, but love the fact that it's in this proposal and also if you do get the money back um, from the court uh, reversing 976, then I would recommend also looking at uh, giving ORCA cards to all uh, middle schoolers. Is that the kind of thing that is a possibility under the um, parameters that you just described for the Seattle City Council? Um. So the current program that is investing in that next generation of transit riders and, and giving free transit passes to high school students, means qualified uh, middle school students and, uh, and, low, and seniors and low income people in Seattle Housing Authority buildings is paid for by Seattle taxpayers. That is part of Seattle Transportation Benefit District number one. That is what we have all been uh, investing in over the last six years. To the point about uh, an expansion of, of that kind of program, that would uh, need to be a conversation that there, there's certainly nothing in the legislation right now that would prohibit that. Um, and should we uh, have more money to be able to do so, that would certainly be something that the Seattle City Council would be able to take up. The Seattle City Council has to approve 
the spending plan annually through their budget process. So that is an annual opportunity for not only for us to, uh, and in the legislation, to do a race and social justice um, analysis of how we're spending our money to make sure that we're investing um, in prosperity, starting with, um, uh, uh, start, you know, starting with an anti-racist perspective. Um, so that that would have to be something that the Seattle City Council would have to talk to stakeholders about an, on an annual basis. But as I said, there's nothing in this legislation that would prohibit that from being an option. Thank you. All right, um, Mayor Kiley. Hello. Um, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about the essential workers bit about um, with ORCA cards and that seems like a, a newer addition than the last proposal we had. So if you could speak a little bit more about that, um, I'd like to hear. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Mary, I will confess that that is something that is uh, language within the legislation that doesn't have what I, what we would call like a, a clear programmatic spend on that now. So again, that would be something that would be finalized um, through a stakeholder process that the city council would undertake as they finalize the spending plan should this measure pass in November. Okay, but the measure is just saying like, we want to spend money on this too, is, okay. is what they'd be voting on. Okay. Yeah, one out of every three Seattle uh, essential workers is a transit rider. And so it is clear to us that transit is, uh, and always has been a, a critical pillar, an infrastructure pillar of a functional society. And so as we're seeing right now how important that is for um, workers and for people, we wanna make sure that we're investing and in, in, in broadening that benefit for the people who really count on it the most. Great, thank you. Any other questions? I have one. Um, out of curiosity, um, what percentage does this uh, this uh, sales and use tax? What what um, percentage does it represent as of the total transportation budget for the city? Hmm. That's a really great question. Um, I would have to get back to you on that. On um, you know, this is a tax that is collected by uh, sales that happen within the city of Seattle that goes directly to King County Metro, who is the agency and the jurisdiction, their division of, of King County uh, government that uh, puts the service forward. So it is, um, there is a small piece of it that goes into the Seattle transportation budget um, for planning purposes, the program elements, but uh, it is it is a tax that is then um, used to purchase from the county. So I'd have to get back to you about what percentage it is of our Seattle budget um, and what percentage it is of our King County Metro. Pre the previous STBD one investment, which is higher than the level of investment that we'll be able to accomplish th with this one, did comprise about eight percent of King County Metro's overall transit. Um, budget. So just to give you a scale of, you know, um, you know, eight out of uh, eight out of every hundred dollars that we spend on transit service in King County was coming through STBD one. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Summer. And I know we already asked the question. I think it was the first question asked was what happens if this doesn't pass? What are the cuts? And, and you've mentioned that this is actually smaller than what had been proposed in the first place and smaller than the last time we voted on this, which I voted yes. Um, what was cut from the last time to this time? I don't think, I don't think we've heard that, but, and if we have, then I apologize. Yeah, um, this, this measure is, is, is smaller because of the loss of the car tabs, um, not by, anyone's choice, right? I just want to make that really clear that that was, um, that, that's on Tim Iman. Um, the, what, is, what is different from this package? Um, well, the, there's the addition of the West Seattle piece, 
What is not in this package that was in the first one is um, uh, the reserve spending. So seven cents out of every dollar of STBD one was put into a rainy day fund. Mm -hmm. This just doesn't generate the kind of revenue that makes it possible for us to feel like it is a smart allocation to take away from every dollar that we need for transit service. And the proportion of um, the, the spending that goes directly into transit service is smaller than the last time. And that is because we held steady on the programmatic elements and because the overall package is smaller. So it sounds like you did the best you could with some really awful circumstances for, due to Tim Ryman. We're trying. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see, we're at about minute 16. If anybody has any other questions, we have time. I might have missed it, but um, the West Seattle Bridge, does, what, I mean, what impact does that have on the, the city budget, um, the transportation budget there? Mm. I know that's kind of a mixture of a lot of different areas, yeah. but since it's within yeah. the city, I'm just kind yeah. of Yeah. Uh, I will say that I am very lucky to not have a whole lot of involvement in trying to solve that crisis. Um, the it is going to be uh, exceptionally uh, it is a mega project to repair or replace the west seattle bridge the decisions about how um about how we're going to do that are still being made right now there's a lot of options in front of um the community in seattle about how we're going to address that it will be and, and as well as a lot of opportunities right um to combine that that what is now vehicular and transit only infrastructure with the potential for there to be mass transit infrastructure on there as well as we build out light rail to to Ballard or uh, and West Seattle. Um, so I can't say exactly what per percentage of the West Seattle bridge replacement and repair is in the Department of Transportation budget. It certainly wasn't something that we anticipated having to spend money on. Uh, and is likely going to need an additional investment uh, in the future. Right, um, we have very ambitious goals, though, about getting uh, mode shift, um, which is now uh, up to 30 percent of what we want to get is, is people leaving West Seattle in something other than a private vehicle. Right, so those you. options will include more investments in rapid ride service, like the very popular sea line, the 120, the 54, and of course, the West Seattle water taxi. Any other questions? All right, if you would like, you may go ahead and take a, a one minute to tell people why they should um, vote for this. Yeah. Um, it is critically important that if we are going to continue to be a society that invests in um, sustainable mobility that is um, equitably distributed and accessible to people, that now is certainly not the time that we can walk away from investing in transit. The continuation and the renewal of the Seattle Transportation Benefit District is a critically needed measure in order for us to continue to invest in the mobility needs and the human rights of Seattle um, residents, workers, students, and visitors so that we can achieve a just society, a healthy economy, and a sustainable planet. So I uh, hope that everybody here will be excited to uh, endorse and renew the continuation of our nation leading investments so that we can point ourselves in a just and transit oriented healthy recovery for our economy, our people and our planet. Great, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me.